Thank God for Lance and his paranoia. He could smell tension and confrontation. He had bad eyes and squinted to study the rhythm and pace of those on the streets coming toward him. If he noticed one stumble or push or shove, he was on guard. One night, he was heading back from an open mic at Phyllis's Musical Inn, a blue-collar bar on Division with poor boy poets. Two guys bigger than him swayed arm in arm out of a bar further down Division and walked toward him down the sidewalk. When they got close, he stepped off the curb and onto a strip of grass. He was holding drums with fine steel rims his girl in Florida had given him for his birthday and stood like the royal guard letting pass the queen. Sure as the sea, he was targeted. One of the men stepped in the grass and went to grab him, and Lance made a wild gesture to stay the man, but the man lunged forward, and Lance moved quickly. He acted fast. He looked back, breathless, when he was running off. His drums lay in the grass next to the man, howling in pain holding his bloody chin while his friend stood nearby, unsure of what to do next. What's with the peace and love act, Will sometimes ribbed him. You're looking for a fight, asking for a fight. Why can't you pass people nonchalantly like an ordinary human being? They only start trouble because you act suspicious. You ask for it, brother, and leave a man in his blood entering drum circles, smoking a communal pipe, talking softly. Who would guess? You thirst for blood. Chapter 8 Will couldn't keep his mind off that darkest night. Bella's fresh blood on titanium, girl on girl crime. The balance was gone in his head, in the world. What made him tremble with liquor-elevated rage in a world of whispers? Why couldn't he be a man? The whole mess was unresolved, bloody. Every crime these days seemed to be committed dirty and without honor. But the true nature of crime was thus revealed. There could be no beauty and honor in settling a grudge with violence. Only in the movies... There certainly was no beauty and honor in sleeping with Cass. She was her own victim. She didn't need him to make her life more unbearable. The drink was no excuse for what he had done. All he had left was natural and common hope, and his emotions ventured out to his fingers and toes. The world could change and be reclaimed, swamped by rain to fill the bone-dry arteries with rivers of blood and life, and wake the silent forest to turn on the highways and overgrow them and reclaim them and make man powerless with compass and interminable wood, climbing pines toward the top overlooking granite ridges to dense, untouched valleys, fearful of the unseen gusts the pines swayed and creaked under in a been with him a hold of the bark that scraped his sensitive skin white. Will hoped for the return of the natural madness that would make girls of men and men of the girls who thought they were men. Only hardship and trial could ever bring America around.